प्लीज कैन आई सिट डाउन यू आर नॉट टूरिस्ट आर यू नो आई हैव बीन ऑन अ सर्च प्लीज टेल मी योर स्टोरी बिकॉज़ इन द माय ओन वे आई एम सर्चिंग टू दोन आई नेवर ड्रीम्ड आई वुड विजिट इजिप्ट to my surprise it proved to be the first step on my very long journey the pyramids were grander than i could have imagined cheops the largest and most majestic left me breathless as i gazed at them i knew these magnificent structures intimately connected to the stars and cosmos in subtle ways we cannot perceive the most enjoyable aspect of my egyptian sojourn was the days spent sailing down the river nile stopping to explore the fantastic ruins As I brushed lightly into the different religions of the world, I wasn't sure what I was searching for. God? How can one truly know God? So I set out to observe, listen and experience with an open mind. To my limited knowledge, it seemed to start here in Egypt, perhaps 10,000 years ago. Someone came and lit the lamp. That much was apparent as their lives were suffused with religious thoughts of the afterlife. But over time the light had gone out leaving only their longing for immortality one based on the physical body and its needs But what about the now isn't that the injunction be here now This moment is where life is lived If we can stay in the sacred now the rest will fall into place no matter the path chosen To me all paths ascend to the same mountain top for surely there is only one god and that god must be omnipresent Even today they're inspiring what must they've looked like at their peak roofed painted filled with people and the grandeur of the pharaohs in Cairo, Aswan, Abu Simbai, Luxor, Karnak and the Valley of the Kings was akin to gazing into the distant past. Where do you go to next time? To India. Though the Hindus have many names for the god according to his divine attributes and incarnations all are of the one supreme being The ancient Vedic religion frequently emphasized sacrifice and renunciation and stressed the need for man's ceaseless search for the ultimate reality through self-inquiry spiritual practice and the love of truth In India I learned that this supreme consciousness has embodied itself in human form numerous times over millennia typically when human affairs on earth are not going too well
Hinduism is derived from the Vedas, the oldest scriptures on earth, known as the breath of God. In the Vedas, Upanishads, Puranas, and Dharma Sastras, the eternal values of life are recorded with great elaboration. I had some truly wonderful experiences in many temples in India. Several times a priest came out and led me by the hand within the temple and sat me before the deity where others were not permitted. Sitting thus in meditation, time disappeared. This filled my being, and what seemed minutes was hours. But the priest never disturbed me. Hindus believe in avatars such as Rama and Krishna, God manifesting in human form from age to age to restore righteousness and truth when they're endangered by man's ignorance and greed. As embodiments of the divine, such beings exert an immense influence, not only upon India, but the entire world. Do you go to Varadasi? Visiting Varanasi was truly uplifting. A special feeling permeated it like no other place. Everything seemed familiar. Ganges River, people praying and purifying themselves in its waters. The cremation fires for the dead. The many small temples to Lord Shiva and Goddess Ganga. Yogis sitting in meditation and doing japa on their prayer beads. Yes, I know in my soul I'd been here before. A Bali, a small volcanic island at the bottom end of the Indonesian archipelago. Bali is one of the most beautiful places on earth. The Balinese people, clearly in love with their religion, live the teachings of Lord Rama, a divine incarnation who walked the earth thousands of years ago. The Balinese have a deep appreciation of art and beauty, and one sees this in their daily lives, and in how they dress when they attend their temples and perform food offerings. Their dances are world famous. The monkey dance performed by the village men 
pays tribute to Hanuman, Rama's greatest devotee. They live simple lives, farming rice and other crops, fishing, wood carving, creating wonderful art. Their exquisite temples are set in the most striking environments, within and on the sides of volcanoes and high cliffs overlooking the ocean. Their shadow play is religious, as it chronicles the life of Lord Rama. Where are you going? Kamu mau kemana? Bye bye. From offshore, the island appears as a jewel in the Indian Ocean, dominated by a huge semi-active volcano. You know, Buddha, born in India? Yes, the origins of Buddhism are in India. For Buddhists, the Buddha consciousness, which is pure love and compassion, is seen as the highest state for man. One must destroy greed and desire to reach the dispassionate principle of divinity, one which is full of compassion for suffering humanity. In the monasteries of the high Himalayas of Tibet and Nepal, there is a feeling of awe one is dwarfed by the sheer size of the surrounding mountains, which are permanently covered in ice and snow. Just being here, one is filled with humility. Kathmandu is like living on another planet. The whole city is living Buddhism. Spending time in and around the giant stupas with their worshipping people, spinning prayer wheels, prayer beads, was a wonderful experience.
To witness the continuous lines of devotees walking around the stupas and the chanting and meditating monks was a sight to behold. Thailand Buddhism was different but the same. Different as in the wealth of the country, reflected in the beauty and size of their temples. The monks and the teachings are the same, simple and filled with a humility that other religions don't express. over the country the people visit their temples every chance they get. It is a great honour and blessing to feed the monks. I lived with a sect of jungle monks in Thailand for over six months. As they spoke no English and I spoke no Thai, most days were spent meditating and listening to their chanting. Japan's tallest mountain, Mount Fuji, whose top is always covered in snow, is an awesome volcano. To see deer roaming freely with no fear of man brought joy to my heart. Japanese Buddhism is not really different from the others. It has the same prayers, chanting and meditations.
to me, the architecture of their temples and gardens was the most beautiful in the world. The countryside of Japan is very beautiful and inspires one towards a meditative and reflective mood. No sound but birds and the falls gently cascading into emerald pools, one could feel the peace of being one with nature. Last sunlight falling on the golden Kinkakuji temple. So beautiful. After Buddhism came Judaism. They persecuted in almost every land in which they have lived for 5,000 years. The Jewish people have managed to keep alive the millennia-old traditions of their religion and remained faithful to Jehovah, their name for the one God. Of the Christian? In one way or another, yes. Jesus Christ emphasized the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, and his followers dedicated themselves to the selfless service of all beings. He preached a gospel of unconditional love and never spoke ill of any other religion. We are still to this day trying to live up to the example he set. As I watched them put Jesus on the cross, it seemed my heart would burst, and I could not halt the torrent of tears streaming from my eyes. When Lord Buddha was asked, are you the Christ? He replied, no, even one greater than I will come. Such humility from such a great one Jesus lived his own teachings, non-violence, loving our brothers and sisters, forgiveness and serving any in need. He allowed himself to be crucified to show mankind they too must live their lives in peace and non-violence. The love this bringer of light had for humankind opened my heart, as it must have done for millions of Christians around the world. Such love to endure so much for us. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre was built over the site where Jesus was crucified. After the priests finished their chanting, I felt drawn to kneel at that sacred spot under the altar. In reverent humility, I kissed the glass covering. Waves of bliss washed through me. Truly, Jesus' love and compassion yet lives in this world for those who open their hearts to it.
Though I learned much on my quest, I was saddened that many still insist theirs is the only way to God. These followers have misunderstood the teachings of their masters, for all faiths teach God is love, and to live in God one must love all without exception. Looking around the world today, this is clearly not the case. That brings me back to my original question. How does one go beyond book knowledge and actually get in touch with the divine? Merely reciting the scriptures of one's religion by heart in itself means nothing. If that was the key, then why is the world in such disharmony? So again I ask, how does one actually experience the bliss and ecstasy of divine love and the peace that passes all understanding? Didn't Muhammad come next? Yes. The one God, called Allah by the Muslims, means the merciful, the compassionate, the sole Lord of creation. Muhammad is considered as Allah's own prophet, God's voice in the world. During his life, he struggled to lift his people out of barbarism and ignorance, leaving with them the sacred scripture, the Quran, to guide them. In my travels to date had I experienced such brotherliness and unity as the Sufis sang and chanted their prayers. It reminded me of the Tibetan monks. Closing my eyes, I could have been in a Tibetan monastery in the Himalayas rather than in Istanbul, Turkey. within my heart drew me here. And so I set out to find this embodiment of the living divinity who is called Satya Sai Baba. 
I was not disappointed. Not 15,000, nor 8,000, 2,000, nor even 1,000 years ago, but now. The One is here in form, walking amongst us, counseling us, healing those who suffer, speaking in all languages, being seen in several places at the same time, appearing in people's dreams all over the world, and even returning life to those who have died. To be in Sri Satya Sai Baba's physical presence was so blissful, one never wants to leave it. Yet it is only after leaving it that one truly begins to experience his omnipresence. No matter where you are, merely thinking of him with love can bring instant bliss and an ecstasy which fills both the body and the soul. Once this divine contact is established, it is no longer book knowledge or someone telling you stories. He has touched you and you have realized he is the indweller within your spiritual heart and closer than your very breath.
To look into those eyes is like looking into space, into the cosmos. There are no words to describe what one experiences. It is so beautiful, and you know that when he looks into your eyes, you know that he knows everything. It is as he has said, I know the past, the present, and the future of every one of you. Sai Baba once gave me a beautiful dream. We were walking along the beach by an ocean, hand in hand, talking and laughing. Suddenly, Baba let go of my hand and walked out into the water. As I watched in amazement, the ocean turned slowly into space. Sri Sai, surrounded by space, stars and galaxies, turned and motioned me to join him. Time is something we humans concern ourselves with, yet to such a one as Satya Sai Baba, who is omnipresent and omniscient, time means nothing. It was during my third day in his presence many years ago when he first called me to him. He walked up to me and whispered in my ear, I will talk to you tomorrow. I can still hear his voice echoing in my mind. I was thrilled that out of thousands of people he came and spoke to me yet it was not until six years later that he finally called me in to speak with him.
As he walks amongst us, he is making contact with every man, woman and child present, answering prayers and continually healing. One can feel his love radiating out to all as he approaches. Absolute bliss fills our being, tears fill our eyes. It matters not if there is only 1,000 or 10,000 people, everyone is filled with his love and left in an incredibly beautiful state of peace a peace that passes all understanding. Now, in the winter of my life, I reflect on the long journey which brought me to the presence of one through whom I could glimpse the divine. That I found living divinity may indeed seem a miracle, yet there is more. For though I came to sit at the feet of the formless, clothed in human garb, my Bhagavan has taken me further, so I may witness living divinity in and around me. In every blade of grass, in every sunrise and sunset, in every smiling and frowning face alike, in those at peace, in those at war, from within all things and beings do I now perceive the light of God shining forth. 